If you think sports, it's like for me to win, you have to lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like business and life isn't like that. One thing I did know, I didn't want to stay in my hometown. And like I love my hometown, I'm never going to shit on it, but I just knew that wasn't for me. The feeling of being stuck is because you're not growing. You want life to get harder. You want new challenges to come because you get stronger, you get stronger, then you get better and better. Like we talk about polarity and keeping yourself neutral all the time. Would you rather be positive all the time or negative all the time? And all the boys said positive. That's great. But then soon as something bad happens, the pendulum swing back to the negative. Being a proud person is a good thing but being too proud yeah. when, you, when you can't ask for help when you see guys that you look up to and they start to commit suicide that's like if you looked at us from the front end we'd look like we're these like super successful footy players that are trying to make an extra buck but behind the scenes i was just going hey i'm starting this from my house yeah. i had read like over 100 books and i could tell you fucking everything about everything yeah but i've done nothing with that knowledge like i've literally had about eight people say like i was about to commit suicide and i was listening to your podcast while i was lying on the train track when you hear something like that and it gives you tingles down your spine. Fuck, that's pretty cool. Just quickly before we get started, guys, if you've been enjoying the podcast, can I please ask that you consider leaving a five-star review and subscribing on whatever platform you've been listening. It really helps the podcast grow. All right, bro, here we go. Epic episode of every, for everyone watching on YouTube. We're not in the studio. We're coming a fucking uh, a beast of a studio. Uh, Ice, thank you, for, thank you for having us in. We've got Isaac John, uh, for people who would know him, probably from the Ice Project. Obviously uh, played NRL for the Panthers and the Warriors, played some tests as well for Cook Islands and New Zealand. Um, but what we want to talk about mainly is this fucking journey you've gone on post-retirement with YKTR, YKTR Sports, and all the content you've put out. And before we get into your journey and talking about all that, I don't want to brown nose you, bro, but I want to say, obviously I've been aware of everything you've been doing over the past couple of years, but obviously as someone, I'm just so focused on what I'm doing, but I spent hours last night researching you and bro, on behalf of the planet and all the boys out there, all the guys and girls trying to start businesses, thank you for everything you do, bro. The, the content you put out there and the perspectives you're sharing is really, really valuable with the free eBooks, the YouTube, the podcast, all that stuff, bro, the world needs more people doing shit like this. So thank you on behalf of everyone. I know these boys are fucking massive fans of you. So thank you for everything you do, bro. The world needs more of that. And thanks for having us in this fucking epic, epic studio, man. Thanks for having me, bro. That was a good intro. I nah. appreciate it. Very <laughs> kind. Make me sound way cooler than I am, nah. but I do appreciate it. Bro, you guys are like some of like the visionaries in the space in Australia. Like there's not many people executing at the level that you are in terms of a content production house. So uh, I look up to you guys and the stuff you're doing and I'm really inspired to, you know, go on my own journey down this path of building out content and media and help giving back to the world. Um, so we'll get into it, bro. Where I want to start with you before we get into YKTI Sports and that transition out of uh, rugby league, I think to do your, just, the, your story justice, we need to start with kind of your upbringing and your childhood because something I found really interesting with you is, is your dad was your footy coach and it seemed like from, from doing my research on you, he was the one that kind of instilled that competitive edge and that winner's attitude in you. So what, t talk to me about what that was like growing up with your dad as the coach and the, the mentality that you guys went with for playing footy and just fucking trying to do everything you can to win. Uh, yeah, I think a um, big part of that is like he was an Islander as well. So <laughs> like you, uh, losing wasn't an option. Yeah. And like one thing I subconsciously what I've learned from him over the past is like you obviously watch your dad and your parents and your house as you start to grow mm. up. And whenever he set his mind onto something, he always did it. Like I wouldn't say he was entrepreneurial, but he would start touch competitions in yeah. our home time. He started our local football club because – they weren't looking after the kids better, better. So he was always the type of bloke that would go, all right, this isn't working. Let me go start my own thing as well. Mm -hmm. And put all his money into it, put all his time, put all his effort into it. Um, but he and he wasn't never monetizing it. He just wanted a better future for yeah. like my, me and my brother and my friends and stuff as well. So it was good to have my dad as a coach. I was always busy. Um, I was in a cultural group as well called a Viki. So I used to do like Polynesian style yeah, dancing as well. So I was always busy. So I'd go to school. Uh, Monday, Wednesday was poly practice. Tuesday, Thursday, um, he'd train me. And then he'd also train our, our local prem side as well. Mm. So I'll train with them and then I got to train with the Prims as yeah. well. So I'd be training like three hours a night. Yeah. Um, like it was just fun. Yeah, yeah. To, like we grew up in a small town when there's not much to do. You want your time filled up and mm. I was always busy. A Saturday would um, go be the ball boy, go sit in the changing rooms, go yeah. run around. Sunday I'll be playing footy. So, so that was it. And, and did you know from very early on that you wanted to pursue rugby league as a career or when did that start to click in? Like that's going to be what I chase. Oh, I just, I always had a look into the future. One thing I did know, I, I didn't want to stay in my hometown. And like, I love my hometown. I'm never going to shit on it, but I just knew that wasn't for me. I wanted to get out and travel. All that sort of stuff excited me. As soon as I got up in the morning on the weekend, I was gone. See you later. Yeah. Had to be home before the lights got home, got on. Very old school 90s style, but, um, um, I just saw my options were, well, first of all, my mom, my mom was awesome. My mom was great. So she, she balanced me out very, cause I was into league and I was 
kind of good at it. But she was going, if you don't do well in school, you can't play league. So she was kind of blackmailing me in that way. Yeah. And she always pushed education on towards me. So I had to read. Um, she made me very independent. Like I was making my own lunch from like five from wow. when I was about eight years old where I had to cook, um, me and my brother had to cook the family dinner like one night a week. And I didn't know why she'd done this. So it wasn't until recently when she come over, she goes, her older brother, when she grew up, he had everything done for him. So he got babied. And she always said that if I ever have two boys, they're not going to be fucking spoiled brats. Mm. Now she almost probably raised me a little bit too independent because yeah. I don't feel like I need anyone. And sometimes um, we've got a great relationship still, but like I'm happy to cruise off for a month and not talk to her. Yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. mum, mums want to talk to their sons yeah. every day. So um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that at the time, but that was really important. But it, my options were either you work in the mill like everyone else in my hometown, um, which fucking scared me. Mm. And my dad gave, gave me a great life through doing that, but I just knew I didn't want to do that. University, I was a good student, very like school came quite easy to me, yeah. um, but just didn't enjoy it. And then just football seemed like the shiny thing over mm. there. So I saw that as my way out and um, I was pretty lucky. Like have you read the book Outliers by Malcolm nah, Gladwell? No, nah, I've been recommended it many times. Great, though. great book, but it talks about different things. And cause my dad was my football coach in my backyard, I had 10 footballs there. Yeah, yeah. So if you think about the numbers and I live, I live two doors down from primary school. So when I was bored, I used to go down and kick balls mm. and try and hit the post and do all these different things as well. But I had access to 10 balls. Yeah. So if you think about it, I'm, I'm, I'm on the field, I'm trying to hit this post over here. Most kids would be lucky to have one. So they'll kick the ball, go run after it, pick it up, come back. Yeah. I had 10 of them. Yeah, so yeah. I'll just go kick, 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 kick. So if you think in the space of an hour session, mm. I'd be able to probably kick 10 times as much balls as someone else. Yeah. Now you just go reps after reps after reps. Not to mention I live next door to a football field, not to mention my dad was a football coach. Mm. All this sort of stuff starts to add up. I used to sit in changing rooms um, and do video sessions with like growing men when I was kids. Like he made us do all those sort of things. Yeah. And losing was an option. So Quade Cooper was mm. um, my best mate growing up and my dad kind of treated him the same as he treated me. Yeah. Cause we we're kind of like the better players in the team. Like we had to win. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you get so accustomed to winning from five to 15. Um, you just expect to win and mm. kind of know how to win. So it's it's so interesting hearing about that. Like obviously the independence your mum distilled in you has been fucking valuable, I imagine, with a lot of the things you've done in your life decades down the line. But also the importance of sport because like, yeah, you were saying you loved it and you wanted to be a winner and you wanted to chase it. But I'm sure there were days that not every single day, three days a week, you wanted to go train or you wanted to go do your dance. But the discipline of, like, you always want to play footy, but the discipline of, like, showing up even when it's tough, when it might be cold outside, raining, you don't want to do it, that makes people so much better, strong individuals. And I feel like we're losing that a bit with society today. Like, the same thing with rugby league, they don't want like any points and there's no winners in the games until, like, 13 years old. I'm like, yeah, that's I, don't, that's I don't think that's going to make the next generation, you know, tough resilient you know yeah and like to like i've doing doing a lot of like research on myself lately or self-development lately and independence is great but it's also failed me in a lot of places as well and like if you talk about relationships like yeah. i'm 33 right now um happily single my life's fucking great don't get me wrong but i've failed in relationships because i've almost been too independent so when things start to get like a little bit rough I just went, oh yeah, I'll be sweet on my own anyway. Yeah. So yeah. instead of like diving in and dig, digging in and unpacking emotions and stuff like that, I'll just go off, oh, sweet, I'm off. Bro, I've, I've been the same <laughs> and it's been something that's confronted me uh, a lot in the last year. Cause I, I was single, I'm, I'm 29. I was single for like the last seven years, a couple little short little things, but relatively single for the last seven, eight years. And I've been with my partner now for a year and I realize I'm the same, bro. I don't need anyone. And, and, and it serves you a lot of the times, but then also when people try and get close to you, it's almost easier for you and it's a protection mechanism to not let people get close because you're like, if I open myself up to that, then there's a risk that I can't control the outcome. Um, but it's really interesting and something I've started to look into. Have you have you like heard of like attachment theory and the different types of attachment and stuff? Nah, I haven't. You should, you should look into that, bro. Like I reckon from your childhood, you'd probably be secure, which is like the one you want to be. But it sounds like you're the same as me. We have an element of... um. What's uh, 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 fuck? What's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, avoidant, an avoidant attachment. So like you, you don't. So some people are needy, but yeah. like they need that, and some people protect themselves by not getting into that. And that's something I did as well, and it's something I've had to learn to open myself up. Because like I'm saying, I, I'm so passionate about life, building my businesses, and all this sort of stuff. But it's I've never, as a kid, imagined how I want my life to be to be that 40 year old bachelor. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. So we have to push ourselves to grow in ways that aren't always comfortable, and it's not always the way you plan. So it's interesting to hear that journey that you're going to go down and 
getting real introspective on yourself and so yeah. One of my friends, Bella, she asks me like, have you ever been heartbroken before? Mm. And like I always pay attention to what my first train of thought was. And the only time I could think of myself being really heartbroken is when my dog got put down when I was like seven or eight. Wow. <laughs> and I've been in like, yeah. I've been in like long-term relationships <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm like, shit, maybe I'm not giving myself fully to this part of yeah. life, which is yeah. relationships and stuff like that as well. And like, I, I'm very data and analy analytically placed as well. So like when I see guys in, in relationships, when I come through football and, and all they do is complain about their girlfriends, yeah. so I'm just like, well, why would I get in a relationship? Yeah. Cause all this guy does is complain about his girlfriend yeah. where I'm like, I'm free. I can do whatever I want, but it's starting to change now. Cause that was mm. that one question. Have you ever been heartbroken before? Really? was like, shit. I haven't. Yeah. And th there's a power to being vulnerable enough to be heartbroken, right? Yeah. And and the thing is as well, I wanted to get back to the to the footy stuff in a sec, but like- Yeah, we've gone on the tangent here. We've gone in, we've gone in, <laughs> it's going to be an hour talking about relationships and shit. Um, no, nah, all right, we'll, we'll get back to the footy stuff because there's so much I fucking want to ask you. But it's interesting you said that as someone from a small town in, in NZ, because um, we had Troy on, uh, Troy Savage uh, a, a month or two ago, and he said the same thing. Like when you're there in these small towns, a lot of the time sports your, your ticket out of there. Sports the big thing that everyone gravitates towards. Uh, and now I wanted to ask you something. You said you were best mates with Craig Cooper. Now, obviously- You've played whatever, 30, 40 games of NRL. That's fucking a massive achievement. To play one game of NRL is a massive achievement. You've played tests for your country, both NZ and Cook Islands. But then if you're best mates with one of the biggest rugby stars on the planet, how, how I want to know, I'm interested, how did that affect you? Is it something that was always just like a, a, a positive thing that spurred you on to, to achieve that level of greatness? Or was there ever elements of comparison or envy to the level of success he had even though nah that, yeah. that's a fucking actually really good question and I, th I just don't think I've ever been that type of person yeah. where like like if you look at my content now, I give away a lot of my shit away for free. Very Gary V like, and we've mm -hmm. talked about him off air as well. But I'm always, I was just always happy to see other people win because I knew his success didn't take away from my success. Mm -hmm. That was that was a big thing, and I probably couldn't have worded it that way. But I was always like super proud of everything yeah. that he did as well. And and the the side effect of that is, and it's hard to see at the time why my career wasn't so great is because I was always injured. And whenever I was injured, I was into like reading books as well, which transitioned me into this next part of life. Yeah. So it's hard. When you're a football player because you only live week to week yeah. like i legit i've only just learned over the past couple of years of how to plan out for a year or five <laughs> years i was just so used to living week to week and game after game and that sort of emotional roller coaster and my all a lot of my ego was attached to football as well where like anything like that i love seeing other people win it yeah. and i know it's an acquired taste i know not everyone sort of likes it but I just always thought like he's earned that. I've seen him work hard. So there was never, there was never an element of envy there. He yeah. might be coming through today actually, yeah. which is random. Yeah. Sick. Um, well, with that as well, that gets me onto something I wanted to speak to you about. Obviously you're a big believer in, or you just have an abundance mindset. And like you said, it's not for everyone, but it, it should be an acquired taste. You should push yourself to feel good about celebrating other people's success because it's, like if I'm successful, I'm not taking away from you. If you're successful, you're not taking away from me. Talk to me about what abundance mindset is, what it means to you and why you feel like it's so important to have. The, it's sort of weird that you transition that away from what sports, because like if you think sports, it's like for me to win, you have to lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like business and life isn't like that. Like yeah. you can be successful, I can be successful as well. And there's so much money in the world. There's so much opportunity in the world. There's so much success in the world. And like, hey, define success is very important. What your values are very important. And like a lot of the times, like even now, like we're in a scaling part of business. This last two weeks, I've learned more about myself as a business person than I have in a fucking long, long time. Really? And what I'm going to do after today this is friday and i'm still trying to front and be a good boss and jump on content and shit like that as well but i want to take a photo and then what i do i actually jump on my um phone i go hey siri set an alarm for one year from now wow. and i'll flip it back to um and i'll in my notes i'll, I'll go check your notes and there'll be a photo and I'll, I'll have to take a photo of it and it'll remind me of this time of, of the lessons that i've learned through here and the lessons i'm learning right now through scale, scaling and yeah everyone's going for them like yeah. when you start and you try and get to like a million bucks like you got those same problems it's just there's a bigger scale now as well so it's like yeah like i said the abundance mindset is this success for everyone and what i've found with successful people is they're and the ones i look up to they want to help you they want to they want to give you they, they don't give you the answers though this is the tip though only dumb people tell you what to do. Like if you look at internet, you're the haters, you need to be doing this. I think you should be doing this. A lot of times we pay attention to the people who have never done shit that we want to do. Where when I hang around super successful people and I'm not talking about money, and like I know these guys in here that are multi, multi millionaires worth like 50, I've hung around Mark Boris and all those sort of guys before. They never talk about money, but they'll ask you a deeper question mm -hmm. or they'll ask you thought provoking questions that make maybe change your line of thinking. And then if you're good enough, 
and you change your line of thinking, you start to acquire new actions, therefore different results, therefore your path changes. Where then they're, they're just not just going to go, go do this, go do that. They want you to learn on your own. So the most successful people I've hung around with don't give you the answers, but they ask the right questions. There's no value in that. And it's the classic saying, it sounds like a bullshit thing everyone hears. You teach a man to fish, like give a man a, a fish, fish for a day, yeah. teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Um, on that, you something you've spoken about, and I want to ask what that growth has been for you in the last two weeks. But I, I want to speak to you about something that you, you, you talk about. It's like, you want your problems to be getting bigger. That's a sign that your life is leveling up. Kind of to explain that process to people because a lot of time people think success is less problems okay I'm, I'm up here now i have to deal with less stuff but it's exactly the opposite i've actually got the best analogy for this and i was talking to it with my friend it'd be like um so back in the day when you play a playstation game or yeah. nintendo imagine going my playing mario and you go through the first level and you get onto the flag and you drop down the flag and then you go down the tunnel <laughs> imagine going back to the start of that exact same level mm. and you you'll get quicker but over time you'll get bored and what's that? That's most people's lives. Mm. That's the nine to five. That's the rat race. That's when people start to feel stuck. Um, I, watched, I watched that Mal Robbins episode and she talks about the feeling of being stuck is because you're not growing. If you're, if you're like need food, you start to feel hunger. If you're missing someone, you start to feel sad. The feeling of being stuck is mm. because there's no growth in your life. There's no goals in your life as well. So I said on an Instagram post the other day, new levels, new devils. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so as you you want life to get harder, you want new challenges to come because you get stronger, you get stronger, mm -hmm. then you get better and better, and therefore the higher up you go, the better levels you get, the more reward, reward you get. Right, exactly, and and this is the thing about life, right? And I've got some really good mentors in my life who I trust and respect. For one one thing, uh, I've been doing Kung Fu for like almost seven years. My my, my grandma That's stuck. fucking random. Yeah, it's fucking, yeah, you wouldn't expect that looking at some <laughs> skinny white boy. Yeah, but if I walked up to you, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to be right in yeah. the fire and you just go fuck <laughs> that's what i love bro and i just like shirts like these no one would ever expect yeah, it. um but what was i saying so like yeah and and i'm so lucky because i've spent a lot of time with him his name's also gary as well so two of my biggest mentors are named gary and and we're so lucky because not only is he so dived into the culture of kung fu and and that's really a culture of self-development that's the the, the self-defense is is just one small aspect of it. And that's what people don't understand from the outside looking in. But why we're so lucky is his day job is he's a high performance psychologist with like athletes and mm. business people and stuff. So we get so much out of that. And he's like 60 something years old now. And he's like, let me tell you something. And he's incredibly successful. Like you're never gonna have a period in your life longer than a couple of weeks with no problems. Like we're always gonna have problems in our life. And it's about changing your flipping your mindset and being grateful for the problems that you do have. Like for me, for example, if I'm stressed out and something like you, you've got a team of like people you need to train and things are things are going off the rails a bit and you might not be making as much money as you did the week before and that is a problem and that stresses us out yeah but like what about the guy who doesn't know how he's going to pay his mortgage or put food on the table for his kids they're both problems but i've got to be grateful for the problems that i do have and that's a mindset shift that i think is really powerful to to adapt yeah for sure and a uh, big thing about gratitude you know fun fact we actually own the word grateful we've trademarked the word oh, grateful sick, as well bro. so we say that a lot um but the big thing about gratitude is a lot of people are only grateful for when good things come into their lives as well so um i'm kind of bigger have you read um seven hermetic teachings of Kabbalion? No, oh no. so i'm kind of like really big into that but a lot of it's built around like polarity so like you said you got to be grateful for the bad problems yeah. that happen in your life as well but i think the key to gratitude is being grateful for the smallest of details in life. Mm. And that's my biggest thing that I've learned over time. And the only small things, like I wake up, like waking up is mm. fucking pretty mad. You're alive. Think like jumping in the water. You, like I live by the beach now. I can swim in Bondi. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, I used to dream about this shit. Like, and there's times I do take shit for granted. And like I used to dream of having a big fucking studio and yeah. stuff like that. And we kind of when you get there, like there's a little thing called the law of diminishing return mm -hmm. where after the first one, it starts to diminish after time. You yeah. think of your first bear, you think of, First time you're taking a drug, you think of your first fucking Tim Tam. Yeah. The first one's always the best. Mm -hmm. And over time, you're always forever chasing that. Mm -hmm. So it does sort of get that. And you do get to get accustomed to a lot of things. But being grateful for the small things is a good way to but look at it. The thing about gratitude, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's something that I've had to work. Like gratitude comes naturally to some people. Obviously, Gary Vee seems like it comes naturally. The concept of gratitude is the easiest thing to understand. But the principle of actually absorbing and living it is much harder to do, right? Mm. The, how do you, how, like, what's the process been for you to actually integrate gratitude into your life? Like uh, the, the best one for me is like you just said, looking at, I'll be stressing out about shit. Five years ago, I would, this is my dream life. And now I'm stressing out. Like that's probably the best way that I can attach to it. But what's, how have you integrated it? Well, if you, uh, there's um, like, we're well, seven times more likely to focus on negatives than actually positives as well. So you look at the like primitive brain, like uh, back in the day, would have been paid to it would have been great to be a pessimist because if a lion comes across and you goes 
and there's a pessimistic and optimistic person, yeah. you'd rather be the person that runs away. Yeah, so yeah. over the course of history, our brains developed to like protect ourselves. So like when we walk into a room, we don't know anyone, like we suss it out because our brain's mm -hmm. first job is to protect ourselves. So naturally we're pessimistic, but we kind of like gratitude's hard because it's something you constantly have to work on as well. But the best way I see it is you always got to look the opposite way. And Gary talks about this a lot. So we always draw, um, like we talk about polarity and keeping yourself neutral all the time. So what I said to the boys is, like, would you rather be positive all the time or negative all the time? And all the boys said positive. And I'm going, that's great. But then soon as something bad happens, the pendulum swing back to the negative mm -hmm. is really bad. So Gary V's analogy of this is with compliments. Like if you gave me the greatest compliment in the world, the key is to stay neutral. Mm -hmm. Where once criticism comes, you just feel exactly the mm -hmm. same as well. So if you start buying into Ward's praise and there's 99 great comments, you're like, how good am I? And that one comment, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that, that one comment can ruin your day. If you don't let the 99 bother you as well, that one comment just goes straight over the top of your head. Yeah. So polarity and just staying neutral is the key, I feel. Yeah, that's the way I try and go about it too, man. And I, and I know there's an element to ego that's protecting me in doing this, but like, I already know who I am, what my, what my values are, what my purpose is. I already know what I think of myself and I just do not let it in. Like you've had to, and this is something I've had to develop. Like a lot of people ruminate on bad thoughts. I just, I had, it started a process and you know what it started? It started when I broke up with my first girlfriend. Um, this would have been, you know, late teens. Um, and you can't stop thinking about them and it's making you upset. Well, you, you haven't been heartbroken, but <laughs> I have. Um, and like, I remember just, you just this uncontrollable feeling of feeling like sadness, right? Um, but then I just started this thing and it stuck with me ever since. I just have like a band list in my head. If something comes in and it's, it's, a, it's a thought that's going to lead to insecurity, I'm not good enough or why don't I have this many followers? Why didn't I get this? I don't even think about it because if you let that in, it grows like a cancer, these bad thoughts. So I've just developed this way of I know who I am in the path I'm on and just tune out the rest of the noise. And if you can do that, there's a real peace in that silence. Yeah, and it's a little bit hard because it's like case by case. So for me, naturally, I've always been like a confident kid as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been able to do it. Like I've never let, I've always been like a little bit weirder than my friends. Like I always hang around degenerates. All yeah, my friends, yeah. even growing up, were like trouble. Um, and my friends now, they're still like a little bit trouble. They mean well, their heart's in yeah. the right place. And I've always been like a little bit different than them. But like naturally, like I've always been able to do that. And mm -hmm. I don't know why, but... Yeah, it's a, like the blocking one's important, but I, then I think sometimes you start to suppress like certain memories. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to any type of childhood trauma, when I talk about a couple of my friends and stuff like this, we start talking about the Maslow hierarchy of needs, basic human psychology. Yeah. And I'm like, you're at this point here. And the reason why you can't get to this next point here is because you you haven't addressed things from in your past. Mm -hmm. Now I've had fucking great parents as well. So when I hear my friends' stories about how they grew up and they've got abandonment issues now, and that's why when they jump in relationships, they're so fucking attached to them. And then they go, oh, fuck, get away from me. Yeah, yeah. It's because I had such a solid home, mm -hmm. um, home life. My mum and dad were fucking great. I had great education. I was winning fucking everything. So it's easy for me to sit here and go, oh, why don't you just do it like this? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it's case by case and so many kids have such a tough upbringing. 100%. But what I'm trying to do now is trying to, you know, the saying, if you don't feel, you can't heal. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times, like I didn't cry. I cried once in my 20s that I can remember. Wow. And it was when I snapped my Achilles and I cried for half an hour. And then I just walked out and just act like nothing had happened. Mm. Oh no, sorry, I cried twice. And then um, because in sports, you're like, you just have to get on with it. You have to be a man. You have to be tough. You're a professional player. You just blah, blah, blah. And I caught up a guy named Joey Nellavale who used to play for Penrith and he snapped his Achilles as well. We met for, he goes, bro, you just got to lay yourself to feel. And I remember the next two days, I was like crying for like two days and I just couldn't <laughs> stop it. And it was the only time I really remember crying in my twenties because subconsciously I'd always block things off. Yeah. Like family members would pass away. I'd just rock up and be like, it was weird. It was weird. Well, bro, I, I, I was similar in that sense as well. Um, I, I was the same, like, so I, my, in my story in, in 30 seconds, I, I, I thought I was going to be a lawyer, went to uni, um, got good, so same thing as you, got good marks at school, but because I, I had the same way, school was so easy to me because it's just a memory test. Yeah, it is. How can you remember and how good can you write? Yeah. That's, 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 that's all, like, I probably thought I was smarter than I was because I was so good at school, but really, I just had hacked the system. Photographic memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying school. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then dropped out and I fucking so depressed in uni doing law, I did acting. Um, for do you, do, have, five you five of, have you struggled with mental health stuff? Or? Um, I haven't, bro. And that's one thing I'm so grateful for. I, my, well, I never grew, I didn't meet my dad till I was 15. Mm. And a lot of people think, oh, Dylan, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'm like, bro, don't be sorry for me. I lived with my mum and my grandparents for those formative years from when I was zero to five. And I was surrounded by love and positivity. And I was always told I could do it. There's nothing I couldn't achieve. And that was the first foundation of me being able to be confident. And grandparents can tell your mum off too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, keep, parents, it, yeah. they keep it going. Um, <laughs> But yeah, where was I going with that? Um, 
Yeah, but the thing that the, the risk in developing this sort of mindset is something I've had to be careful of. And I, I love to hear what you think about it as well. It's so good to protect yourself and not let these negative things in. But then if you don't have an element of self-awareness to still evaluate where your weaknesses are and where your shortcomings are, you can turn into a real dick. Yeah, for sure. Like, and I'll, I'll, slope. I've been fucking a dick plenty of times mm. as an entrepreneur, as a boss, as a fucking friend, because my a lot of my ego was attached to what I did. And, and like, I'm like, I'm paying you to do a job. Like, why the fuck are you not doing it? Yeah, like, yeah. And so like a lot of that has been attached to it, but like, I th I'll, I'll talk about balance a lot for the rest of my life as well. Mm. So prior, being being a proud person is a good thing, but being too proud yeah. when, you, when you can't ask for help, when you see guys that you look up to and they start to commit suicide, that's like, what the fuck? He was mm. like the guy, he was the solid guy, but he tried to be too solid. He couldn't ask for help. Now, you don't want to be the other side as well where you have vulnerability, but you don't want to be a sook and you're feeling sorry for yourself yeah, and, yeah. and you're not having actions. Like I, I've got a friend where all he does is like ask for help and he'll never take on the advice. And then next week later, he'll just ask the same thing. And over time, I'm just like, no, like I've told you what I – come to me once, I'll tell you. And then if you don't take the advice, go, yeah. go talk to someone else as well. And that sounds like a little bit harsh, but like you don't want to be too far that way as mm. well. So I think being a strong, solid dude or whatever gender you are – but having the other man offside, the other side of you as well, where you can go like, I'm, I'm struggling here or like yeah. even in business. And I've learned this as an entrepreneur over the past like month and a half is like, instead of me trying to protect everything and, and, and like get this business going to the next part and why the fuck's us frustrated upstairs? Mm. Like, hey boys, this is what's happening. Yeah. Like here's the numbers. This is what we need to get to. If we can't, and I have to make some cuts. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is this is how you save expenses. We get rid of offices, we get rid of staff, and we can ship it all the way back. Yeah. So I've started to move like that a little bit, and obviously I don't say it that direct, but mm. um, no, actually I do say it that direct sometimes. Well, that's the thing about business. Like the first step in business, your first goal is just survival. And lots of people don't, people just think overrunning business is just printing cash so easily. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, first, yeah. and then like <laughs> you hire these young kids and it's like, they, they have no idea uh, what it takes. And like, they're just like, bro, what, what, they just expect their money just for being in the office. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to pay you. But like, you realize I'm a, it's a small business. The work you do compared to being in a massive corporate has a genuine effect on the success of the business. If we don't achieve the, the numbers we need, there's only so long I can continue to pay you if we yeah. don't turn it around. Yeah. And like getting them to understand that. And I was, I was 24 when I started the business. And by the, by the end of the first like year and a half, we had 12, team members we're like some of them like 40 years old and i've got to try and navigate telling our 40 year old marketing manager how to do things <laughs> and it was just was i fucking had to learn a lot on the job yeah you know yeah I mean? for sure and like staff staff's like hard as well because like a lot of the times like you said they do think you're printing cash and yeah, just yeah. like going like that whacking in your pocket um but like we don't show PL sheets and stuff like that because the boys wouldn't be able to read them anyway <laughs> but the interesting thing was it's like just paying attention like when the things are on the up everyone's got their hand out looking for more but when the things are going down mm -hmm. you're like like oof, where's that hand now? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You know, we don't see the boys shipping in for anything like that. Like mm. so, those, those have been some interesting experiences I've gone mm. through over the past, of like obviously like five years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Do you know what I realized when I started to scale out? I'm like, I want to build this big fucking team. Yeah. And once, once I got to that team where we had like 10, 12, I'm like. I don't want this. Well, I did the same. <laughs> and I, I was like, Oosh, we I, did, we I did the same. Come all the way back in. Mm -hmm. Because th th there's multiple reasons. I, I would rather have less people uh, that I pay a little bit more that I can trust and rely on. There's that. But also, and I feel like there's a benefit that for the business, but also I thought about what my, what life sort of lifestyle do I want? Do I want to have the freedom to start a podcast in another business? Or do I want to be working day in, day out, 10 hours a day in one business? And I'm like, I want, I'd rather set up my business to serve me in the lifestyle I want rather than being a prisoner to my business. And because we had so much success, we made like 20 million in the first two years of business. And I'm like, I'm like, I felt guilty for wanting to step outside of that and do things that I was really interested in. Yeah. And it took me a while to be like, no, I'm more than just this business. I don't, yes, it, it changed my life for sure. And I'll always be grateful to Happy Skincare for doing that. But do I want to be doing, living this life, sitting at my desk in e-commerce, typing on my computer for 12, 14 hours a day, yeah. not seeing anyone? It wasn't, it wasn't the life for me. Yeah. And like a lot of the times I found with entrepreneurs, like say, I, I think you'd put in the same category. We were visionaries. So mm -hmm. like the best thing we can do is inspire people to go in a certain direction. Yeah. And there's a difference between leadership and management. Like leadership's like, let's all everyone go in that general direction. Now, I'm great at that. Yeah. But management, I fucking suck. Because oh, individually we have to go around and go like, how can I get you to jump online so we can all go yeah. in this way to Together, you know the rising tide raises all ships where like if i spend time with certain people then you're like 
oh, I've just broken up with my girlfriend. I'm like, fuck, this drain, it drains the fuck out of me. Yeah. So yeah. I've realized over time that I'm not probably a great people manager as well. Like, and I'm probably a little bit too direct because I just see things in black and white. But in terms of leadership, like I can be influential as fuck. I can speak very well. Yeah, I can yeah. get us going. And if you get me in a room with someone, like I can, I can get them to believe in the vision pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's my strength. So I yeah. need to be doubling down on that and hiring out the spots that I yeah. am good at. That's what I realized too, bro. And it was a bit of an ego check for me because I've always been a natural leader. I'm always like captain to the sport team because I'm outgoing. I'm like I said, like I love speaking and jing the boys up and everything like that. And I thought that just meant I'm a good leader in all ways. You know, like I'm good at building a team and training no. people. Yeah. Completely different. Like, yeah. Completely different. <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to ask you about a, a pivotal moment in your life. I think it was a, a Bali trip you're over um, would have been maybe in an off season and you, and you met some guy, I think it was, what's his name? I've got to hear, Ty Buddha. Ty, Ty Buddha. Talk yeah. me about that trip and the influence it had on your life. Um, yeah, it was just like, I looked, I started looking forward more to off seasons than I was to actual football. And I knew I was over football for a while, but subconsciously I'd never said it out loud. So in my mind, and like I believe in the universe and, and, yeah, and thoughts too. and stuff like that. So in my mind, I used to keep saying, like, I'm over footy, I'm over footy. And then, oof, injury, yeah. I'm over footy. I'm like, and then when I was getting injured, I was like, what the fuck am I keep getting yeah. injured for? And because subconsciously, like you got to be careful about the words that you speak out to the world because mm -hmm. that's going to give you the option to do it. And a lot of people ask for bigger things, but don't expect the test to go for it as well. Yeah, yeah. So I remember I was in Bali and um, just dragging a camera around, just filming. And I met a guy named Ty and I kind of just had like this man crush on him. <laughs> He's like, he was dating like this model. Um, he owned all the bars. He was like this moldy, he's a moldy dude as yeah, well. Yeah. I'm not moldy, but I could relate to moldies a little bit more. And I was just looking at his life and he was a big wave surfer at the same time. And I was just like, fuck, he's cool. Yeah, like yeah. there was no one in football that I looked like that who, who was like him. And then I used to hang out with a guy named Nate Miles, who's a big footy player. Um, he was at Manly. Me and him, used to, we clicked straight away. And he was owning F45s at the time. Mm. And he used to always talk about the Zane Rope guys. So at yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. 2015, Zane Rope were like big Popping dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're over in America. They got Nate Robinson rocking all their stuff. And he knew the two owners. And, and he'd be on the phone to him. And I'll be in the car just like listening. And he go, oh, I'm just taking off to LA for a week. I've got a meeting over there. I'll be back next week. Let's catch up for a coffee. So in my mind, I'm like, Fuck, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. So you, he's living on his own terms, can do whatever, he, whatever he's wanting. He's working on something he was proud of. And I didn't know that at the time, but that's kind of what, what I wanted to do. So in my mind, all I wanted was, if I can make 10K a month, I'm going to go live in Bali. That, yeah, th yeah. That's all I had in my mind. Yeah. I, do, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but that's all I had. So I come back in my last preseason, same thing in my mind. I'm just mm. going, I'm over football, boom, injury. I'm over football, injury. And then I, the first time I said it out loud, it's like I dropped five kgs. I'm like, I'm done with football. I said it out loud wow. in, in the changing room. I was in there on my own and I'm going, I'm done with football. And then I was like, oh fuck, this is the first time I've actually ever yeah. said it out loud. And then from there, my mindset just switched. I'm like, shit, how do I get out of this? All right, I've got this much money. I'm gonna, <laughs> let me just start YKTR, see how it goes. I was doing Ty Lopez courses. I was doing yep. drop shipping. I was doing yeah, all that yeah, fucking don't. standard shit around 2015. Um, I was just trying to build multiple streams of revenue to get 10K so I could move to Bali. Mm, that's like what I was saying, bro. And, and you, you probably struggled with this because like you're playing NRL just to make it to top 30 is such a massive achievement. You kind of feel guilty for not, loving it right a part of you that why oh, do I, why don't i love it yeah because you feel like you're living your like five-year-old self down yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> that was like your dream like the whole time so that was crazy so that was like pretty sad oh not sad like you, you feel like, like a bit of imposter syndrome but you're like i've wanted this my whole life now it's changed mm. and like a lot of people fans will go like oh you guys should be lucky because you're earning x amount blah 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 and all that sort of shit so there was a bit of imposter syndrome in there pretty early um but yeah, kind of just like I said, I've always been comfortable just doing my own thing. But yeah. bro, you got you that you were honoring what you wanted at that time, bro. And like, if you didn't explore that, like, like rugby league, or obviously these opportunities wouldn't have come off the back of it. But that was just a part of your journey, bro. Changing is 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 not a weakness; it's a strength mm -hmm. and it's redirection. And like moving on to the next chapter is such a, a powerful thing to do. But I want to know, did, did you talk to your dad about how you were feeling or how did he react when you're like, I want to uh, step away? No, nah, he was all right. Cause like, he wasn't the type of dad that would try and coach me when I got a little bit older. Like mm. he was happy to just let me do my thing and try and figure it out. And like, I had some pretty bad injuries, like in terms, not, not life threatening or anything, but in terms of football, like I would have would have missed like three and a half, four years of like football. And yeah. it was always when I started to go well, like it was very cyclical the way I played football. Like I'll come back from injury, train real hard and then I'll jump into a team. We'll go on like little winning streaks yeah. and then I'll get re-signed literally like a week later, bang. Yeah. And I like snapped my Achilles, um, done my ACL, snapped my pec, broke my foot. 
And it just seemed like one after the other after the other. But in that time, I was big into reading because mm. I didn't want to waste my time. I didn't want to be playing PlayStation or You're watching so Breaking Bad. so lucky you thought it like that because a lot of the footy boys don't. You know my mum, I mean? my mum. My mum forced mm. education on towards me. Mm. My mum was the mum that like if you had fun one day, you couldn't have fun the next day. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Out. Yeah, so if I had a mad day with the boys swimming in the lake, yeah. on the Sunday, like I was mowing the lawn or some <laughs> shit. It was, like, it was like she didn't want me to have too much fun at the mm. time. So when I hang around Chico and Corey and they're the most fun guys in the yeah. world and we're 15, we're cashed up, we're all fucking single doing what we yeah. do. Um, I always got, well, would go out and the next day, I'd like subconsciously in my mind, I'd be like, nah, I'm not going out again. I have to go do something. Yeah, yeah, be productive. Yeah, and we, we were we were um, big into FIFA and 2K yeah. at the time and we'd spend like three, four hours and there was like this light bulb moment at the same time where I'm like, no, nah, I'm wasting my time here. Like I'm not going to be a fucking mm. Twitch streamer or whatever it is. It wasn't even an option at the time, I think. But so whenever they'd, they'd hit the PlayStation, you hear the button, I'd run upstairs and yeah. start reading because I just wow. knew. And I was getting, and there was a time, this is how much PlayStation the boys were playing or how much spare time. I was reading like two, three books a week. Wow. Like no, nothing like no big ones, mm. like 180 pages. Obviously got into a bit of a reading flow. Then I was trying to read books on how to speed read and yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was just doing random as shit. Have you read was, like Jim Quick stuff? Like yeah, how he's to, good. Yeah, yeah, his little tricks and hacks and stuff. But that's the thing, man. And, and once you catch the bug, it sounds like your mum gave that to you early on in life. But once you catch the personal development bug, you can't stop. It's that, that, fulfill, that chase of your greater self, it, it never ends, bro. It, it never ends, but then you got to get to a point where you actually uh, like putting some shit into play at the same time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I say this to the boys, like, like, and I think there's a little bit of insecurities at the time. Like I used to always try and speak like really, really smart. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. Oh, cause I'm reading books, I'll be trying to say big words, but what I actually found, and this has helped me in business and marketing is like the easier you can explain it to someone, um, the better off you're going to be. 100%. So uh, what I got to the point was I was kind of like uh, the underneath of a bear cap. I was just a bunch of like useless facts. Like I had read like over a hundred books and I could tell you fucking everything about everything, yeah. but I've done nothing with that knowledge. Hadn't applied that knowledge in any way, shape or form. So um, that was like another reason. I was like, I need to actually do something with this knowledge because yeah. I'm just like fucking Google. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing is, well, do you follow Hamozzi much? Do you know Alex Hamozzi? Yeah. I've just, I've, he's come onto my algorithm at TikTok. You yeah. like him? I just, yeah, just, just got on him recently. He's now my favorite current content creator. He's so good. But like he says, like, you're better off reading five like five books in your life, or one book five times, yeah, and really sure. absorbing and implementing it than reading five books once. And then because you don't fucking absorb anything, you go into your next book and it's like, but what, what did I take out of that? You know yeah. what I mean? Apart from the facts, like implementation it's, is the most important part. It's like Bruce Lee's like that mm. saying, uh, I don't fear the man that's practiced a thousand kicks. I fear once, the man, yeah, 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 yeah whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And like, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. And like, you look at, like, if we go back to sports, a lot of the best players, they've only got a couple moves that they really mm. rely on when you're down into a clutch moment, the one that they put the reps in as well. So I think if you had a solid 10 book, that's enough foundation yeah. for you to do everything. Well, like I was listening to your podcast with Benji Marshall um, and like how many times did he practice those steps? Fucking yeah. 10,000 easy, you know what I mean? Like you just got to drill and drill and drill and actually implement them and things that are actually, okay, he, I, I'm not running around doing steps. I'm not fucking playing footy, but something that's actually going to be able to be implemented into your life to move your life forward, whether it be business, personal, whatever. But that's the way you got to do it. Because just acquiring knowledge is fucking pointless if you don't do anything about it. And that's kind of what the Outliers book is built on with Mal Malcolm yeah. Gladwell, where um, they did the study on ice hockey players. And a lot of the gun ice hockey players were born between January and February. So if you're doing it during the, like the normal year, the guys that are born in December, they've uh, ones in January basically got a whole year of growth on them in terms yeah, of like growth yeah, spurs. Yeah. So when you're going through like teenage years, that's a big difference. Massive, yeah. So, um, and then those guys were making rep teams, therefore getting more reps and maybe training one or two hours. And then yeah. for over time, because they had so much more reps than everyone else, they transfer into the NHL. So, and it was the analogy I had before with fucking kicking 10 footballs and I had a football park right next to me. If I had to walk two, three K to that, I ain't going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I wasn't allowed to leave my street. Yeah. I, I had to stay on my street. <laughs> Another book uh, I read very early on in my personal development journey, uh, it's called The Talent Code. And yeah, I've got that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just the way that people prepare. And it's just repetition, bro. It's just repetition, repetition on the skills that matter. And that can fucking change your life. If you fucking really own five t skills and you can stack them that are relevant, like if you're going to be a videographer, can you edit? Can you fucking, you know, storyboard, all that sort of stuff? If you can really develop five skills and just fucking nail it and the complementary skills, you can go anywhere in life. Yeah. And like you can be like the best at that, or you can have, like like you said, like five or six different skills where you can be very diverse. Yeah, so yeah. If, if YKTR had to strip all the way back, I'd, I, I, could, I know how to edit video edit I know how to take photos I know how to storyboard mm. I know how to do tech packs I know how to do the marketing I can do Facebook ads as well yeah, yeah. like I can do it I literally can do it all on my own I wouldn't have a life but <laughs> I can do it all on my own yeah um, I want to ask you something uh, we spoke about imposter syndrome uh, a little bit before but I want to speak to you about it 
as, as like a Polynesian starting a business? Because it's like you said, you didn't have a lot of role models that you saw doing it. Talk to me about how you felt starting a business and going out there and building your own thing as a Polynesian boy. Yeah, a little bit embarrassed, eh? Because like I saw business as you had to go to school. Like you have to have a marketing degree and a business degree. But what, like what I used to say is like, I'm learning more in this three years and you're going to get in, in business. And we talked about life experiences and you talked about heartbreak. These experiences in life, you can read about, you can hear about on the podcast, you can see in the video, but it's not unless you unless you go through those, we can actually get the lessons. Heartbreak's one, not knowing where, how to pay your next invoice is one. I'm going to bed on an empty stomach is one. How, learning how to feed your kid is one. Um, losing a parent, losing a loved one, losing a kid, but that'd be the saddest mm. shit in the world. I, I, I feel sad about that, but imagine a parent actually going through that as well. And a bigger, a lot of that's built around perspective, but in terms of imposter syndrome, you couldn't, you wouldn't have met a guy like, I would come from a rough town. I'm of a football player. I'm an Islander and I never went to university and I'm sitting on podcasts with like Mark Boris trying to tell <laughs> yeah, him what yeah. to do. So, um, but I, I did get past that as well because it, it was only the people that are insecure that were judging me about them. The guys that have got business degrees but don't have the balls to start a business. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the times, a lot of the smart people, they're the ones that are actually scared to actually start a business because they understand all the risk. It's just like, idiots they just go fuck it let me let me just have a crack and it's not not an idiot about intelligence it's just like the fear of just being normal the fear of being in the rat race or the nine to five scares us more than not even trying yeah oh that's the thing and there's there's no option for me and then i've, I've talked about this quote before but yeah, like you'd be unemployable now i could exactly yeah, bro, bro, i could not like i, I could but it had to be someone like I, gary v goes come work with yeah others. yeah my oh well, that, that's the thing i told you i was over with gary v uh for, for four days in his office in new york this is like this was 2020, this was what, February. This is, I got out of there right before fucking all the COVID blew up. Central Park was a hospital. I was there like three weeks before that. I, I remember. Was, I was there at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when I was there with Gary and I was gonna go back and I said, look, at the end of it, I'm like, oh, this is gonna seem weird as someone who's here like as a, as a successful uh, a business owner in my own right. Um, but like, can I come? I'd love to come intern like with your team for like mm. a month or something. He's like, you know, I fucking love that. I was meant to go back and do stuff with him. But like, I, cause, <laughs> I couldn't now take myself back in, in, into a position like that because like I just figure out a way, like if I had to, I would go to a job where I didn't have to think, I could show up, work at a gym or something, didn't have to think, didn't have to take my work home, do it, earn enough money uh, to pay my, my bare minimum bills. And then I'd, I've got the skills to you know, at least make enough money for myself to get by. But like, there's this quote from Robin Williams and, I, and this is one of the reasons I stopped acting and now I understand it when it, when it, when it comes to business. It's like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't only be an actor if you need to be an actor. I'm like, oh, no one needs to be an actor. I'm like, oh yeah, I just want to have fun. Like a lot of people do acting to chase the life mm. and we'll walk down red carpets. Same and as all this footy. Shit. Same as yeah, footy. Yeah, 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 right. Because yeah. like now I know because like I could not be in business in some shape or form if I tried. Yeah. Like it's just it's just ingrained and like it's it's we, we talk about it like everyone thinks not ever. It's, it's starting to, to, the perception is starting to change because people are having real honest conversations. But like one of those things is like when you start a business or your mates will be like, oh bro, you got a business, can I have free tees, free shirts? Everyone just expects you've got so much money and stock just to give out, but you're literally scraping everything you can just to build this business off the ground. How did you deal with like that element? Because you should support your mates to start businesses. Yeah, and like in Ireland, the culture, you're taught to share with everything mm. you got. And New Zealand culture, you're taught to share everything you got. So when you hang around with people that don't have a lot, like you like you share clothes, you share football mm. boots. If I got a pie, you got a pie. Um, we all share drinks. So naturally that's just how it is. So like you said, when you start a business, they automatically think you're rich. I was the same. When I saw a business person, I was like, oh, he must be rich. Yeah, yeah, He's got yeah. a business. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard to say no at the start, but over time, like you almost start half getting pissed off. So it gets mm. easier and easier and easier. And then you start to explain it to them. But I always remember the guys that, said like, no, no, let me, let me. And we were selling t-shirts for like 35 bucks at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fuck all margin. And I didn't know what profit margin was, <laughs> but we were selling out. We're like, holy shit, this is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just remember the guys and like a lot of my friends at the time were football players and on hundreds of thousands yeah, of dollars, yeah. not all of them, but they'll go, no, let me, let me buy a proper yeah, thing. Yeah. Let me, let me pay full price for it. And I always remember those dudes. And and did you start uh, the brand while you were still playing footy or was it a clean break and then you started? After? Nah, like I was about three months before retiring, we okay. started to move like a yeah. little bit then we put our full collection together mm. um so i would have retired in like november and then we would have dropped the collection like november mm. talk to me about the early days like how did you get it off the ground obviously it's become a massive success now and you, uh, nearly every boy in fucking sydney knows him for sure and knows about you guys for sure but how did you get the brand you know i know we, we spoke about off air briefly like 
you're, you've, you have a very, you have a focus on, it's a different model that most businesses are built off. You said produce the content first and then product later and monetize that after. Was that a big part of it? Your content nah. about growing the business or well, how did you get, how did you get it up? <laughs> like when we first started, like we set up like a um, Hotmail. Yeah. And I was like, oh, if you want to teach it like <laughs> Hotmail. Yeah, yeah. And it's obviously someone told me what Shopify was. I was yeah. trying to, I was trying to like code a fucking WordPress one. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember um, I, I snapped my pack and I was, I was in this thing like this and I spent like three, four days like actually trying to code like a WordPress <laughs> website the dumbest shit I've ever done um, but it was a good experience um, then we went into Shopify but so Corey and Chico they had a decent following at the time mm. maybe like 15 to 20 thousand which was kind of a lot yep. um, for Instagram at the time and I just thought oh let's just there's, I don't think there was swipe ups at the time or anything no, like that no. as well um, I didn't maybe stories had just come in um, but I just thought oh if we posted on them it would be sweet and we supposed to like one and blah 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 but it was actually not too long after where um, met like saw Gary V's content yeah because I was big into Tony Robbins at the time and there was a okay. crossover of content and I didn't like him because like, he kept cutting him off yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. fuck, shut up. Like, let, let Tony talk. Yeah. And then he started to say a few things. And at the time, vlogging was really big. And when I finished football, I'd, um, one of the big things I, I was going to do, because I was big into reading and self-development and online courses, I got rid of my TV. So I was like, I'm, I'm not going to watch TV. Um, whenever i got spare time, I'm going to be doing an online course, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then he started talking about vlogging. He was talking about Logan Paul, how he's come from Twitch and how it transferred over to YouTube. Now he's, he's vlogging daily and I knew how to video edit already. So I started watching a lot of Casey Neistat videos as well at the time. And he was the first guy that kind of got me into vlogging. Uh, there was like these uh, Bentley boys, Kai, Jet, that they were really interesting. At, and I found my time at night was watching that mm. and I couldn't understand why I was into it, um, but I knew I could do it. So I, I learned how to vlog from there and Gary Vee is just like, just be open and honest mm. and transparent. So if you looked at us from the front end, we'd look like we're these like super successful um, footy players that are trying to make an extra buck. But behind the scenes, I was just going, hey, I'm starting this from my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got a spare room. And I remember we got shelves, like I documented everything as mm. well. And I'm glad I did because a lot of people will see me now and like, oh, you're lucky you got the office, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Okay, YKT, I've vlog number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, I wanted to ask you about, you speak about kind of being from the school of Gary Vee and, and a lot of what you do is based on those principles. What are those principles that you operate on that you've got from Gary Vee? Because he's been a massive influence on, on my business career for sure as well. Um, Just, I think transparency, just being exactly who you are. One of the proudest things I get about us boys is when we go out, like they go, oh, you're exactly the same person. Yeah, yeah. And like, and I don't hide the fact that I drink and shit as well. Mm -hmm. Like oh, that was in football. We used to always try and hide the fact that we drunk. And yeah. if we met someone we're drunk, they're like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, all that sort of shit. So I learned that from there, but just content value, content value, very much mm -hmm. jab, 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 right hook. Um, I always, miss, he'll say something, bro. And I'm always like six months behind. Like, I know he's never been wrong. Mm. In my opinion, he's never been wrong. And everyone's like, oh, if Gary Vee said jump off a bridge, would you do it? Like, yeah, there's some content in there. Like, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? But I'm always just like a little bit too late. I always mm. just miss the trend just, I'm early in Australia. Like yeah. I was big into sports cards. I was making like money off that, built a good crew around all that sort of stuff. NFT is a little bit behind, but I understand the core concepts that's going to help me for the next 10 years yeah. of my life. But the big one's content, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing as well about Gary Vee. It's like, I, I just haven't seen him being wrong yet. And like, it's like everyone will be like, oh, why don't you just fucking suck him off? Like, it's not about that, bro. Like, I'm not trying like- There's some content in there. There's a content in there. Like, you're fucking making OnlyFans and blow it up. Um, that's the thing, like, bro, and it's, I'm the same as well. And like, this is like, you're well ahead of it in terms of content. We've just focused on that this year. I think about why didn't I start documenting the journey from the start, bro? If I could have captured the Happy Skin Go journey and everything we did. I, bro, I worked, I worked in sales. I started the business with a, a business partner. I was earning like, a, like probably like 55, 60 grand a year fucking selling my soul, bro. One of the jobs, uh, like the, our KPI, it didn't matter really what you achieved in the day. We had to spend three, three and a half hours on the phone just fucking doing sales calls. Ugh. Bro, soul destroying stuff, <laughs> right? Soul destroying stuff. That broke my soul just hearing that, oh, bro. Bro, the mate, it gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Um, <laughs> but just to, to come the long way and like now with the, with the business, I've, I've always been so busy and it's like you, you hear about these trends and it's just like, I feel like I'm getting onto them late. I know what I should be doing, but it's like knowing what you should be doing and actually realize, because there's, there's always priorities in your life right now. Yeah. Like I've always been fucking busy. It's not like I'm just gonna fucking play FIFA and not put out content, but how do you, like, what's the cheat code? Like, how do you implement these ideas, these new ideas into your life, into your flow <laughs> quickly? Because it's something I know I, I can improve on and a lot of people can. Yeah, I think that um, that deck he put out on his birthday a couple of years ago on how to really rinse out a piece of content as yeah. well. So we're gonna do our content here. Yeah. This could strip out 
it easy into 20 pieces of micro mm -hmm. content but then that's micro content should be stripped across so youtube shorts right now tiktok and then then writing a copy for that as well now that does take time so the the analogy we got upstairs right now we kind of come up for a couple of weeks ago is like quality quantity quality so you want your main hero piece to be quality and filmed as best as you can so yeah, when you watch yeah. a long form is good then you go quantity how can i fucking strip the fucking this micro content out there because micro content is king and then you go quality again so taking the time of putting the actual th um like the right thumbnails on your youtube um we're saying like hey instagram the blah blah mm. blah just taking your time with that as well mm. and it just takes that one to hit but the more at bat you got the more um parts of the room you're talking to you just got your better chance of hitting yeah and then right now like even this year we try to go away from who we were as a brand because we were starting to grow. We we're making more money. We we're like, oh, let's do these fucking mad detailed fucking photo shoots. No, our demographic don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're guys who, who sit at the pub and love us because we have a beer and we talk shit and yeah, yeah. like there's a market there because we're just being authentically ourselves. So the harder we be ourselves, um, the more people are going to come into our funnel mm -hmm. because they're attracted to us. But the way you get people into your funnel is like you need to be talking to every part mm -hmm. of the room. And we're very Instagram heavy because yeah. a lot of our, like we're, we're like an, I'm 30. 33 uh, most of us are in our early 30s so over the past five years when we wake up our natural progression is going to instagram yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of going towards tiktok like these boys are a bit younger they're 23 they're tiktok I'm they're TikTok, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah, but sure. the, do, do you know what the key thing was bro i was hung over as fuck on a sunday and i jumped on tiktok and the algorithm for my it was just perfect yeah, yeah. and then like i like bro, i looked up and like six hours had gone and that was like my like that was my key moment i was like oh Woke up at like six in the morning because I get yeah. up early even when I'm hungover and it was lunchtime and I was like, I'll get to get some food. And I, I didn't know where that fucking time had gone. Yeah. So the next day I'm like, all right, we, we need to be on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so well, I found a couple of guys that we need to copy in terms of like all the, all the poppy shit mm. and it's, it's yellow font at the moment. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it, learn how to cap card it and it should be single words. Well, we do every, all that sort of stuff yeah. now, but we've put the first part of our day or, or we time block certain parts um, of our day to only make TikTok content now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So time blocking is very important. And, and like, say you say you can only afford a videographer for one day um, a week, um, and that's a Wednesday. Fuck, make sure you're doing your coolest shit on the Wednesday. Make mm. sure you're in meetings. Make sure, and it's a little bit fabricated, and you might fucking flip your shirt halfway <laughs> through. You know, shit like that. But you can move a little bit smarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think learning how to do all that stuff and doing it quickly is is really important. And like we said, it like you can see Gary V right now. He's just only doing green screen shit stuff. Like I remember when he filmed the whole video on his phone. Yeah. You don't you don't need as much as you think. You don't no. need this fucking shit. Honestly, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Like you look at Rogan. He's had the same studio for the same time because podcaster in the world yeah, yeah what you're saying is more important yeah, yeah exactly and something we've learned as well like it, you got to leverage everything you can as much as you can like you said one hour piece of content then we put it on on instagram and tiktok but we've just started putting it on shorts uh on youtube and like bro we only just started like our youtube's our smallest channel by far um we just started putting it on and we've got like fucking couple hundred subscribers every single video almost so every second one thousands of views from nothing yeah bro, youtube shorts right now and that that is where you should be focusing we have no following on on, on pretty much on, on youtube and they're popping off heaps so you got to chase that opportunities and move into it quicker because the, the early days and you get that super growth super growth organic growth yeah, as well yeah, yeah. and what, what people won't understand about this is everyone's scared of tiktok right now because like you said the younger demographic are all watching tiktok so youtube's watching that facebook's watching that mm. instagram's watching that they're like shit that's the way that we can uh, catch people's attention that's all they're trying to get let's pour all our effort into that so we're going to give people natural organic growth yeah, yeah, like, yeah. people don't understand that so like gary v always talks about go where the attention is exactly and, and i'll say to the boys i'm like we've got fucking three years of micro content backed up to fucking pump them all pump out. It out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, pump 10 in a day and yeah. still haven't done it that's what we're doing now on, on youtube shorts and, and the thing is as well because I, I have I had to move away from it and it's just like the comfort of instagram i know how instagram we're about the at home. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's exactly. A social media home, isn't it for us? Sorry, exactly. But I've ha I have to push myself to get out of that quicker because, like, let's, we've posted the same content from the start, just on the podcast page, lunch, just rip clips from the podcast, and we've got like six times the followers on TikTok from the same content. Yeah. So it's like you have to go where the attention is because otherwise you're just leaving so much on the table and. and the speed to pivot is, is a massive part to the success and not holding on to what worked before. Cause like 
you could start a business five years ago and just run Facebook ads, do nothing else yeah, and kill it. And get a nine row ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask you, bro, a couple of things more about your perspective in your life. Now, obviously you're someone really deeply into uh, personal development, both with yourself and obviously educating, giving back um, to, to the world, to your followers, to to your audience. I want to ask, wh where do you find the motivation to continually pushing yourself to be better? Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I think motivation is like a bit of a myth. And I've talked about this a little bit a lot. I think you're either super disciplined like you, like we talked about before, even if it's cold, it's raining, you wake up and you're going to get what you've done and you want to tick that box every single day. Now the lazy person from the outside looking in is going to go, he's motivated. Yeah. yeah now yeah. the other side of this is like, oh shit, it's just fun. Like motivation is like a weird word. So for me and you, business is fun. Like why why would you stay there for 12 hours? Because we actually enjoy problem solving. Yeah. When, when, when fucking everything's about to fucking crumble on top of us, we actually low-key fucking enjoy it. And if we talked about like my brother, he was big into PlayStation, didn't know Twitch or anything was going to go on. But if you reworded it to go, oh, he's motivated to play PlayStation. Yeah. And like, oh, you're just wasting your time. You should go outside. It comes like a little bit different. So for me, motivation is one, you're either disciplined as fuck and you're going to tick your box no matter what. Or two, you actually enjoy what you do. Mm. And I, I enjoy what I do. Bro, that's the biggest cheat code. Everyone always asks, what's some productivity hacks? I'm like, enjoy what you do. You yeah. won't have any productivity <laughs> hacks. And like, it's not always possible, you know what I mean? But like, if you can be aware of that and start to frame your life and move in a direction where you're doing more of what you love every day, I'm telling you, it'll be easier to work. My key thesis, thesis in life is like the, um, the first five seconds of every morning, am I excited to get up or not? And if I am, I know I'm on the right path. Yeah. And the other part is when you go to sleep. So your day ends on the pillow and starts on the pillow. Mm. If I go to sleep and I've got a clear conscience and clear mind, I'm not trying to fuck anyone over. I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to get like a little bit better. I'm doing everything I can. It's not always like fucking hammer to the wall every single day. But if I go to bed with a clear conscience, wake up with an excited soul, yeah. I think that's the combo. And and, 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 and I woke up at 1.30 this morning because my dog was spewing up, but I was like, all right, I'm up. What can I do? You stayed up from 1.30? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been up. Damn, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's the thing as well. Like I used to wake up and, and I, I love Happy Skin and I love, love e-commerce, but when I was just doing that 14 hours a day, I tell you, I wasn't waking up excited, but I've had probably the last three nights, five and a half hours sleep a night, um, but I've had podcasts every day. We've been filming like content in the studio and bro, I feel, I feel fine. Energized. I'm energized. Yeah. I'm good. I'm ready to go. But if it's, and I know it's a very privileged position to be in, to be able to wake up and, and decide what I'm going to work on essentially, but I, and it's easy to say, but it's so cliche. Once you've made money, it's easy to see that, say that money doesn't make you happy. Like <laughs> yeah. it's so bullshit, whatever. But like, there's a certain amount that, that it does. But honestly, if I was starting again now, like I could, like th there's two ways you can go about it. If I was going to re recommend someone to start a business, start a business like I did a, a laser hair removal handset was our first product. Am I passionate about laser hair removal? Obviously not, never mm -hmm. done laser hair day in my life. But there was an opportunity I saw there um, to make an impact in the market. I saw a gap and took it. Is and it, it was scalable. Scalable, it <laughs> yeah. fucking was. So it ticked all the boxes, so it was. We made money, now I can choose uh, what I want to spend time on. But now we're so lucky, like you said, if you're into gaming or if you're into fucking toys or collectibles, you can start on, to on top of your day job, start building content, start b developing a whole world in that and that can genuinely be a bit be this thing and would you rather make 100k a year doing what you love or make 300k a year and hate yeah, what you do that's it that's 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 the great question and like um it's not till people get to that point when they realize they're actually not happy like say for us for example i had like 10 staff in my mind this is how i pictured our business going and i've like, got the beautiful fucking offices and all that sort of shit now we're stripping all the way back because i was like that wasn't fun no nah, like like you said bro mm. you you want five people i'm working my like 10 and pay them like eight like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. like kind of yeah, like the analogy yeah. that the people say and when you see those like you'll be at the point now where you probably get more of a kick out of seeing your staff thrive yeah, and, yeah, and them yeah. start to make more money and, and you give them like a 20k fucking pay rise and yeah. you're like oh shit yeah yeah because like, yeah. i remember the first time my my first pay from ykta was twenty five thousand bucks and i feel like i won a lot of <laughs> i played in i'd played in test match football games where i yeah. made 40k yeah but at the time i was already making 100k so in yeah, terms of moving yeah. the needle when you're getting taxed over 180k anyway it doesn't really matter but when you go from zero to x mm. um very much that matters those hierarchy of needs yeah. uh, i've never made more money in my life well, well, well one thing as well um that you kind of just alluded to there and what i enjoy more like obviously enjoy seeing the team thrive but what i'm trying to change my life to focus on a bit more not not and this is not me trying to be mother Teresa. this is it, it's even in, from a selfish point of view it's not to be selfish but like you talk about you don't want to be successful in business on your own it's like yeah. now i'm starting on businesses or cutting business friends into businesses because like i want them to be along on the journey with me i want them to be able to make their life what they want it to be and that's what excited me because obviously i started uh, the business with my mate george he was there for a year and bro the highs and the lows both of them are so much better when you got someone next year yeah yeah for sure and like i've started my, my our business relationships like a little bit different where i've started with 
two of my friends, but they've mm. kind of they've let me run everything as yeah. well. So they, sometimes it can be an issue with that in terms of like ice is getting all the praise, but in theory I'm doing all the work <laughs> yeah. at the same time as well. So we've kind of had those issues as well, but they've just trusted me. Mm. And the other side of it as well is like because I've basically done everything. I've never gone to the boys. Oh, I done it once when I first when we went for, for an equity. I asked for like three percent more yeah, from yeah. each voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. And then once I got it, I was like. I didn't even want it anymore. Yeah, like, yeah, I just, yeah. I just wanted like at the time because I was insecure about being an entrepreneur, maybe imposter syndrome. Mm. At the time, I just needed a bit of validation because yeah, I hadn't yeah. got a thank you or anything from the boys, and all I wanted was just mm. like a pat on the back at the time. Mm. As soon as they gave it to me, I'm like, I don't, know, I didn't, even, yeah, <laughs> I didn't well, even want it anymore. Yeah. Um, but they scratched that little itch. Yeah, at the time, you know yeah. I mean? At the time, I, I needed it, mm. but like right now, I wouldn't. And like I said, like if both of those boys combine, YKTR, there's heaps of fucking YKTR mm. shit going on. But in terms of YKTR, like both those boys combine and like more yeah. than I do. Mm. So, but I've never made them try and made them feel guilty about yeah. having that and me doing all the work because that's just not who I am. Mm. The Islander kid from the small town where people got nothing, you just share what, what you got and you grow up in team sports. And if, if we win, that's yeah. good. Like I can play fucking bad, but as long as the team win, we're good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it goes back to upbringing. Mm. Um, like uh, like we said, I, I could have been the one who who could be salty. Like I'm fucking doing all the work. Yeah, well, yeah. give me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. but that 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 co toxic culture can take hold really quick. I want to ask you, bro, because uh, I've I've hired a, uh, quite a few friends out, and I personally love it. But there are challenges with with hiring people, you know, and friends. How have you navigated that? Because obviously, looking into all your con you're very transparent and open about what's going on in your businesses, hiring, <laughs> letting people go. You're very <laughs> open. How do you navigate that? Uh, not very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, because I've I've just I've never had a job interview. Like yeah. I've never interviewed someone. Yeah, I've yeah. just gone. I like you. <laughs> yeah, come. you. You come with me, and I seem to attract like degenerates or people with childhood issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just seem to come in and come towards me as well. And I'm, I've got that thing like I want to help you. Like yeah. I can help you as well. But I, I learned to listen uh, with Caleb. He was our main videographer guy. He's gone on to like film like Andrew Tate and shit at the moment oh, as well. Wow. He's only like 18, yeah, 19, yeah. crazy life. But I think emotionally I got very attached to him as well because he, mm. he shared a lot of personal stuff with me as well. So I kind of felt like I had to like, I don't want to say father him, but like, big brother and try mm. and help him the best I could. And when he left, it kind of like cut me like a little bit as well. So yeah. I had that really emotional attachment to him. So I, to be fair, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I know I can see why people say don't go into business with your friends. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, like if you do just draw a line in the sand, day dot, yeah, day yeah. dot, this is what you do. This is what I do. If there's an issue, but I just come to me. I hate hearing shit behind my back. Like I, I can help you the best I can, but I, I can't help if, if I don't know. Mm. And that's happened with a few of the boys in our office where mm. like I'll be walking, just hear something. I'm like, bro, I was sitting in the office with him every single day. Like, why didn't he just come? Yeah. Maybe I'm not being approachable enough. Like yeah. maybe I'm upstairs being like a fucking stress head and mm. well, maybe I'm intimidating to talk yeah. to. So um, there's lessons in everything, but I'm probably not the best person to ask him that. Mm. Um, but uh, it all changed pretty quickly. Yeah, and, and and it's hard to see someone that's been a part of the team from from very early days leave. But also, it's like, uh, it, it it's sad when it happens. And there's been a couple of people that not only a couple that have been there for a while and then left. It's like, but that's a beautiful thing. It's like you nurture them through this part, and now they're going on to bigger and better opportunities. And you just have to be honest. What you have on your plate for the next six months is there an opportunity for them to grow as much as they can internally? Yeah. And no. if they can't. Um, it, it is best at times for everyone to leave. Um, we'll do a couple last questions. I don't know how long we've been going. We'll wrap this boy up. Yeah, perfect. Just about an hour. Um, I want to ask you now, uh, you speak about the high pressure days in business. I know there's been times you've been more stressed out than others. Uh, how do you manage those times and get back to that place of balance and more peace? Because it can be fucking really taxing mentally. Yeah. So when, when the business is under pressure, my natural instinct is to go, fuck, I need to get there like 3.30 and yeah. figure, figure <laughs> this shit out. Um, but it's actually like the worst thing you can do. Mm. Like sometimes the best thing you can do is pull yourself away from your business. Yeah. Now the really important part is, and I've never been really consistent with this, is like to look after yourself first. Mm. So like for me, if, and my cue, indicator is when I drive to work if there's a guy driving if there's a guy he's a cyclist and if he annoys me if, if that annoys me for some reason that some guy's going out and, and he's exercising like I know I haven't set my morning up right yeah, and yeah. I know it's a fucking small thing but if, if I'm good if I've gone for a run if I've gone, dipped into the water mm. bit of nature had a chat with the local barista if I'm connected with people connected with nature connected with myself when I jump in the car I'm listening to like a Gary Vee podcast or something like that and I'm behind this guy 
and it's cool. Like I know yeah. I'm in the right space. This sounds, it sounds like a weird thing. Now, when your business is under pressure, all you do is fight or flight. Yeah. So I'll go, fuck it, I'm going to fight. I'll be here first thing in the morning. I'm going to work all the way through. But you're not the best version of yourself. So when you're not the best version of yourself, you can't fucking think properly. Yeah. And when you're stressed, you lower your IQ. When you're drunk, you lower your IQ. And that's when you start to say dumb things and you start to say things like you're just frustrated. When you're frustrated, you make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. So look after yourself first. But not only that, it's like sometimes I'm the same. I'm fucking, let's go to war boys. I'll, I'll go there. And sometimes I actually do do my best work because like I was one of the kids, I can't study I can't until it's the last minute. I can't, like that pressure, when under pressure, I do my best work. But what I lose under pressure is my soft skills. How to speak <laughs> to people nicely, how to be approachable, yeah. how to explain things. So it's like, there's a risk in that. Um, and most of our boys are footy boys too. Yeah, so yeah. like, like, um, <laughs> like, cause I've never been in an office, right? I mean, yeah, before yeah. I've come from football to YK, to, yeah, and I'd be like, fuck, you're a dumb cunt. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, you, can't, you wouldn't be able to say that in a normal office. Yeah. yeah. Um, we spoke about before, like, in continual improvement. Do you have a, 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 a like a, a formula or, or a framework that you follow for continual improvement with your personal life and business? No, kind of like I, what I figured out about myself is like I work in flows. Mm. So like my when I'm on, I'm on, and yeah. when I'm into something, I'm right into it. But when I'm not, I used to judge myself for that. Yeah. So right now I'm in this flow where like the last three weeks I've just been bang ideas, ideas, build business. This is how we bring new business in. This is what we cut, and I've been on this flow for three, four weeks now. But then eventually, while it goes up, must come mm. down. It's gonna crash. Now I'll go to sleep for a couple of days and I'll start to rejuvenate, but I'll appreciate that time. Where in, in the past I used to just be like, no, 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 fuck, I'll keep going, keep going and get more frustrated. But in terms of personal development, it's just like just a little bit a day, just try yeah. and go better, like a little bit smarter, have one new idea. I'm big into Naval Ravikant. I love yeah. listening to him talk. And the way he reads at night is like he'll read one page and just sit there and think on it. And a lot of times when I go for a walk, or when I'm exercising, I'll ask myself just one question and, and I'll just go deeper and deeper and mm. deeper. And the first question I used to ask myself is when I didn't have businesses or stuff, what would my ideal day look like? What does it look like? And when I look at my life now, it's what it looks like. I used mm. to live out in Penrith. I live fucking stone throw from the beach now. Mm. I wanted to move closer towards the water. I wanted to have the ability to travel whenever I wanted. So that was the first type of question. And then you start planning it out and you start to visualize it. Mm. And it, eventually it pops up if you don't give up. So... For me, self-development, um, for me, I like to focus in just certain areas. When I'm reading, I'm reading. When I'm podcasting, when I'm podcasting, um, I just, just like tap into little things and just sit there and think on the idea. Like mm. we talked about before, it's great reading 100 books, but if you focus on those five, you're going to be okay. If you focus on five different questions every single day, what makes me happy? Mm. And keep asking that question and go deeper and deeper. And if you go with, when, with a clear mind, it's amazing what you can come up with. Mm. What actually makes me happy? Yeah. And it's like being uh, like I I I I feel like I like I've uh, people ask me like oh, do you love yourself enough like not love yourself like self love, and I think I do but where I think I can be better like like a, you just alluded to it and made so much sense to me I'm an extreme person as well I'll go, I'll be fucking three weeks nothing but work and I'll feel good and then I'll be not feeling as inspired to work 12, 14 hours you can't do that sustainably ever and I'll judge myself for that yeah that was, that was like me for a long long time until I understood like my energy flow but then like say say you're able to do like this much work in that three weeks and then blah, whatever it is mm. like if that was just consistent over oh, it's just it's, it's the hates. same amount yeah. anyway yeah, yeah, yeah it's just the same amount so like it's like a football game it doesn't matter when you score the points and during the game you, you might get 40 points in the first 20 minutes mm. and get nothing for the rest of it you still won it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. it doesn't as long as it's result orientated you just don't have to chip away mm. i think that's how machines work yeah, yeah. that's what technology is for exactly Oh, bro, we could honestly could chat to you for another hour easily. I want to ask one last question. So what, what, what do you, what's next for you guys? YKTR, YKTR Sports. You've got Cheese coming to Sydney soon. Or yeah, cool. Playing for the Roosters yeah. next year. What's what's the next 12 months look like? Uh, we're actually going to strip it all the way back down yeah, and yeah. go back to what's authentically us. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start watching other people's content and make stuff that's organic to us. Mm -hmm. um, what I found with when we're organically us, a lot of people were copying what we were doing. Yeah. So now I've started to look at Basel, blah, blah, blah. But a couple of the big things is, is we want to make the best content in sports media. We want to make content that is tailored towards younger demographic. Um, we'll, the reason why I started YKTR Sports is because I was sick of traditional media. We want to make the coolest content. We want to make the most impact. And I um, want to build ad products that supplement that mm. and build into great businesses. That's mm. basically it. And, and, and what's like, what are you doing with Ice Project? I know you've got two, like the Back. blueprint and you got, you, is that still going to be part of what you're doing? Like the framework for teaching people how to start their own business and change their own lives. Is there more stuff going on there? Or? Me, me and Jade are going to do one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, me and nice. her have got this um, chemistry that we've always had. 
um, in terms of content and we're going to build out some mm. and we're having a meeting about it on Sunday. We'll yeah. build it out pretty quickly. We're going to roll into that. Um, the greatest things I get excited about and you'll probably get this as well is when people come up to you with content and go like that. Like I've literally had about eight people say like I was about to commit suicide and I was wow. listening to your podcast while I was lying on the train track. Like I've heard shit like that. So in terms of like making money, which is cool when you hear something like that, and it gives you tingles down your spine. Fuck, that's pretty cool. Mm. So the more content we can put out, the better. It's just building the infrastructure to do it, do yeah. so as well. So I'm the same as you. And where does everyone find the content? Because man, there's so fucking much value in it. I'm telling you. What was that? Sorry. Where, do, where, where can people find uh, it? Uh, you can find me uh, at ice i i c e underscore. Probably not the most professional name, but I kind of stuck with it as yeah. well. Um, just come follow us at YKTR. Yeah. I do uh, the Ice Projects is my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, very open and, and uh, vulnerable on that mm -hmm. at the moment. If you watch it from from where I was four or five years ago, I'm a completely different person. Yeah. Uh, I've learned fuckload mistakes you can learn from all mine yeah yeah well bro thanks again for having us on and awesome to see you guys go and flourish and continue to, to adjust and do new things and build shit like this and hearing your plans before about what you're doing with this space and what the next year looks like it's extremely inspiring for me so we definitely look up to and admire the work you you boys do so thanks for putting out the knowledge and the inspiration bro if nothing else for everyone else chasing their dreams so thanks again bro thanks my guy pleasure cheers bro done all right, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do your friends a favor and share this with them and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.